Who are you people? Come as you are. Yes, I want you to be as a friend. You can't even save yourselves. Now I do have a soft spot for these Marvel Netflix shows because I remember looking at the trailer, staying up for them, and staying up midnight West Coast time or Pacific time, being like, okay, I'm gonna watch Vendors, Jessica Jones season three, Iron Fist season two, mainly Iron Fist. But I was like, I was really excited to watch these shows, and it's sad to see them go due to not because of the quality of the shows or Netflix themselves. Part of it is Netflix, but of outside interference and business and behind the scenes stuff. Sadly, that is what led to the cancellations of the show. No more of these Marvel Netflix shows, which makes me sad. I really like these shows, aside from like a couple, which we'll get to it's a bit more specific dirt over that it's like the best choreography like series ever in terms of like the action scenes and whatnot it's it's great it's really good so you know it's sad to see it go but i was like you know what it's time to rank all 13 seasons of these shows at number 13 is iron fist season one no surprise here you know i mean it's like the worst one the actor the, the material that was given to the actor was all right the best part about the first season is his that brother or brother that guy he's awesome he's just a joy to watch he's awesome sister's helpful the father okay what's that old lady i forget her name it's forgettable it's awful awful fights drunken fist was i think yeah drunken fist was in the shot i was like, getting excited i was like hey drunken fist like nope i was you know all right well that sucked i ain't got much to say about it it's awful number 12 is jessica jones season two seasons three and two and three but two mainly they really exhausted jones's character because the first season was so great Kilgrave, the purple man it's like what do you do after that and this season they introduced the whole mother thing and mother's alive make her crazy because they're injected with some sort of serum or something that's what makes jessica powerful so she can jump really than high and like punch hard i don't know it's just convoluted stuff they create a friction a rift between hellcat her best friend and her to set up a season three which is still more of that friction between them telling the mother and whatnot even the side characters malcolm i think is his name the, the black neighbor he's off doing his own thing and that's okay the lawyer she's okay as well like everything's okay which is kind of disappointing leading after the events the first season it's like all right i guess this is what it is they've exhausted everything out of this character so it sadly is disappointing and just okay number 11 is the punisher season two kind of like with jessica jones they exhausted this character out in season one which is what makes it so great so season two they do the same thing sort of a rinse and repeat with just different actors different villains and a little girl that he has a protecting i guess serve i don't know i do like karen being in there that's only like the connective tissue for the punisher he's so sus like not a part of it that they have to connect this somehow right so they have karen come in it's like okay sure this makes sense because she was the lawyer for season two of daredevil so i like john bartho as the punisher he's great the whole uh are his army friend what's his name garf his face is messed up i forget his name him remember remembering his memory and then him sleeping with his hydras she has to think for him now which is i guess kinky but I guess it's weird but it's all right sure his top lady she's cool she's actually a badass as well i like her but and again the whole villain thing the whole little girl arc that's not interesting at all it's just a rinse and repeat of what was already great for the first season so at number 10 is luke cage season one this has the opposite effect this is an okay season the first half is really great with mustafa ali as i forget the character's name but he's amazing he was an amazing villain and when they kill him off halfway to half like luke cage's brother dude to be the villain i get that it's supposed to be refreshing but going from mustafa ali to this brother you just see the dip down in like threat level and quality in mind how do you kill off a villain that great he is actually really good like, i don't know why i guess it's just more of a we're bored with this we'll just kill him off and let him go off it's like okay i get that but it's like god damn it you got something here you got something great a great actor a great story a great art a great opposite of luke cage you know the hero of harlem he was that the neighborhood hero cool balance and opposite of mustafa ali's character and you don't do anything with that well you kind of do but uh it, it doesn't there's not much to it which sucks because they could have done something a lot more but the brother wasn't bad it just was okay him using like a gun like against luke cage's body and his hardened bard i guess i don't know it's disappointing but that first half saves it from being like it's a bad season so it is what it is and number nine is jessica jones season that practice and you still suck ass <clears throat> Three. We're starting to get into the good seasons, and season three of Jessica Jones is good, right? It's good. The whole like frame killer, the killer, instead of going after Jessica like physically, he goes inside her head mentally, and that's cool. I like it. He's like a serial killer going after people, and has Jessica Jones solve his cases. That actually ends abruptly, kind of early. I was like, oh man, they end this kind of early, but still, I like the villain. The actor who played him was good, and the Hellcat, her best friend, she's going on in the season doing Hellcat stuff. Again, she's there to be annoying, which is good on the actor's part, but this is more like, all right, I think this is doing too much of a good 
good job to point to where it's become overbearing she did a good job being very hothead and very just impulsive hero which makes her a villain makes cause a rift between her and jessica which is good it's good it's a good set up future for season four but obviously that's not gonna happen anymore it's a good season and in a way that like, yeah, i think this is the one show that left with a clear ending right daredevil as well but it still got canceled but like this one actually had an ending at number eight defender season I like the defenders i get it if people didn't like it it definitely didn't feel as grand and as big as it should have but i don't know these are street level like superheroes and i just expect the street level stuff there's obviously some iron fist magic in there they kind of redeem iron fist daredevil is great jessica jones is great luke cage is great luke cage and jessica jones they have history together iron fist is meeting all of these people like for the first time like everyone's meeting each other first time aside from those two and it's like this is good stuff they have training together one uh ripper walls and shit fighting old school that last part and under the building of whatever building that they're in they're each own respective villains from each show they fight each other which is cool even the side characters setting up pieces with the dragons of the daughter with Colleen wing and misty knight so yeah it's really cool like team setup it does feel drag it is slow it's in person episode four or five like they definitely need breathing time to be like okay we need to breathe come together supposedly matt murdoch dies but it's a season three bitch so a few people that liked it i didn't mind it at all i get it if you don't like it but i was one of the, the few people that was a big fan of the defenders number seven is luke cage season two a huge improvement from the first season having one villain not splitting up weirdly throughout the whole season kind of oh, two villains but keeping them alive mass grandmaster i forget this guy's name but he sniffs this potion which makes him strong enough to like fight against luke cage they banter it out fight each other out every once in a while turns out he's not as evil as he seems way more sinister the one lady i'm, I'm afraid of these names I probably this is i'm horrible at names by the way if you can't tell from the agents of shield video in this video horrible at names but that person she has a daughter the mother's touch sort of restaurant she actually kills her mother because she sees that her mother it's just this like cynical lady and she just won't, will not change her ways so news she poisoned her with a kiss yeah oh how should i word this kiss of a poison poison of a kiss she poisoned she sang a song and talked about mother's touch wanna, which is the perfect representation of that villain whose name i'm like forgetting about but either way the other guy the other guy who fights luke cage turns out he's not so evil after all he's just like once he was a kid he just got fucked over by the world and he's like you know what? i'm gonna take it out on harlem and luke cage for some reason world of wise it's good but going after like luke cage in the city again i'm like i haven't seen it in a while i remember i do like it and it's a huge approval for the first that's all i remember but motive wise i think it's a little foggy in my part oh foggy but i do like him and i do like the way and also what's so disappointing is that some of these shows ended on a huge cliffhanger luke cage season two ended luke cage trying to balance leading next season being a hero of harlem the leader and the club owner of this that's clearly corrupt and a very mob-like mentality it would have been so interesting to see the balance to him him balancing between that and being a hero would have been so good would have been so interesting but sadly the shows is because of outside interferences it got canceled so again it is what it is it sucks feels bad man feels bad and then the next show number six iron fist season two the cliffhanger on that as well iron fist yeah iron fist having you know his iron fist back calling wing having the white iron fist setting up the daughters of the dragon with misty knight all that stuff misty knight has her arm her like robotic arm shit fenders a lot of things that were setting up i like all these actors in these roles but again feels bad man feels bad in terms of the fighting and the action and the narrative we way better our main lead has something has much more to do in this season he, he's much more like confident and just more likable he wasn't like him on the first season he was kind of a annoying little brat this season he's actually more much more likable and like you want to see him on screen colleen wing for the free season is always amazing she's a joy to have on screen her sword and she has the, her white iron fist when she gets traffic to it the villain actually has a motive to go after danny Rand because of what happened his place with danny best friends with danny when he was obviously lost in the plane and went to this the temple or whatever so he blames danny for that for leaving and for portraying him and his people so he actually has a viable reason to go after the danny Rand, and so he's great as well he has a great role in it as well that's all i remember it's a huge improvement and the finger him holding two guns like western style with an iron fist boom deflects the bullet the other bullet the other guy shoot at him it sets up something much more cool in, in future seasons and whatnot again feels bad man nothing came of it go watch it it's still on netflix right hopefully all of these are still on netflix hopefully netflix keeps them because they are like netflix originals even though they're not because they're combo books but number six iron fist season two pretty good huge improvement so these top five are shows that i love or not love but are really good to like great they're number five daredevil season Again. Go ahead! <laughs> 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 
Yes, the son of a boxer. Season two. This is like the least season of Daredevil, which I get. Flippy flips and ninjas setting up the defenders and whatnot. I personally didn't mind that first half. Not exactly the first half, but the first chunk with the Punisher. Awesome. Introducing him and in the show and then getting his own series. Awesome shit. Setting up more of this whole universe. Just great. It's awesome. And him going to court and whatnot. While that's happening, we get to meet Wilson Fisk again. Him interacting with John Punisher in the prison, beating the shit out of him. I thought, oh, she's gonna die, but no, obviously not. He survives, get his own series. That interaction is awesome. Him standing in that jail in prison with smoke and not even blinking an eye. And then here's the thing I do, I will admit, the last like them introducing Electra was interesting, but she was just kind of there. Like the Electra and Ninja stuff, I will agree with everyone else. It is just kind of there. I don't know. Defender set up the big asshole in the building. Like it's a lot of that, which I can get, but I think the fights are still awesome. The story's still awesome. Foggy's still awesome. Like everyone else is still so awesome that I will forgive uh, most of it of the ninja stuff. So I don't mind that at all. I do get it if you don't like it. Lower on the list for some people, but it's a number five for me. Number four is Daredevil season one. A great start to this whole universe. Here's the thing. These are all very low budget, which isn't a bad thing. They're, you know, executives and the, all the producers and whatnot and directors to be, you know, creative in these things. And one thing I do like all of these shows are, are the lights. Daredevil is red. Jessica Jones is purple with the purple man. Luke Cage is like yellow. They blend all of these and they use all of these in all their shows. It has great lighting. Definitely like a clear like imagery of like, you know, what character it is. Okay, I forgot to mention the whole stairway in season two, but the, again, and this one is like the hallway fight as well. The doors, one shot. Love me. This show made me love one shots. It's awesome. And it, he doesn't have a suit yet until like season two. At the end of the season, he has his like black ninja looking suit, which is awesome. It looks awesome as well. It's leading up to him getting a suit, him facing Wilson Fisk. Kingpin gets his own backstory of how he, be he became Kingpin, working for the, you know, the higher ups and him becoming Kingpin, which is awesome. And so this obviously definitely feels like a crime thriller because, you know, him and Foggy are like attorneys and whatnot. And so they have to deal with the law and their lawyers and whatnot. So it's definitely more crime thriller esque and with blending with superhero stuff, which works well. Daredevil and Matt Murdock himself. So really good season of Daredevil. Season one, it's at number four. Number three. Now, I will say these top three are really hard. These three can be interchangeable. But number three, Jessica Jones season. Ow. You know why I live alone? People don't like you? People distract me. One, Kilgrave himself is the best part of the season. Him messing with Jessica Jones. Here's the thing, his abilities are like worldwide abilities. But instead, he decides to, because of his obsession with Jessica, he goes after her. Like he could have been a bigger threat to the Avengers or anyone else. But he has this weird obsession, passionate obsession with Jessica Jones. He has to go after her. And so that's what's great about him. And then Jessica Jones, her life controlled her in many ways. And she broke out of it. They explain how she broke out of it. But yeah, I mean, Jessica Jones bound to with, I forget the actor's name, but Kilgrave again. Both of them are the singers of the season he is great him just like constantly going after jessica jones again like his powers he thought too small if he would have thought in a way much more bigger like that police scene we did it everyone he could have done that honestly to the whole world that was so small he was so stuck in a small bubble that he could not think out of it which sucks more because if he would have thought more bigger me he may have won because of this obsession it cost him his life so yeah it's a it's great i love it number three is jessica jones season one number two is the punisher season one man what a bloody 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 series I love this series or, the, or this show. It's what I want from a Punisher show or just movie. A lot of blood, a lot of violence, a lot of yells. And John Bartha is the perfect cast for this. He, he plays this role perfectly. He's amazing. Man, all like face scraping with his uh, one friend, army friend. The whole corrupt thing about being in the army and whatnot. Them killing his family because he disobeyed. They're very corrupt in the system. All that stuff. Great stuff. The one cop chick. I'm freaking her name. But she's cool as well. What's that one guy's name? Oh, God. He was missing from season two, which is why season two feel less than this season. But the one friend he has underground his family just thought that he died but like he's in the underground still somehow alive he's a great character great bounce between him and frank castle it's amazing and then that like last fight or like when he kills like his old boss gouging his eyes out that was awesome and then that last fight him scraping his friend's face against that metal sign is so like bad and awesome and go watch it if you haven't seen it it's good shit good shit it should have been in here honestly again season two isn't bad it's just kind of disappointing okay this season was great it was amazing it should have been the last of you know john Berthold's punisher now, number one it's obvious Daredevil season three in my opinion the best of the marvel netflix shows it has an episode for that one long prison hallway place one shot amazing wilson fist recruiting bullseye his backstory his need for his like mentor or like, his uh, psychiatrist that's both weird creepy and amazing basically using him and him rising back up his complicated relationship with his wife his relationship with daredevil like daredevil hearing him daredevil's complicated relationship with his mother his father the boxing karen his relationship with foggy and karen i'm thinking that he's dead he's back bullseye wearing that daredevil suit amazing 
scene, him, him getting his black suit, awesome shit. Like everything about this season is great. From Bullseye's backstory, Wilson Fist rising up again, Daredevil facing him again, facing that Bullseye scene where they're facing, they see each other for the first time in that office, throwing shit and bouncing off. And it just looks that all this is gonna go away. So hopefully all these characters showed up in the MCU because they're like expired date or whatever. It's already expired this year. They're gonna use the characters for two years from so hopefully they do something with them. I assume Kevin Feige doesn't have any plans for them, which is why they didn't consider Shield or the Marvel Netflix shows a part of the MCU because they never wanted to use them. Hopefully in the future they can. These are really good at casting and hopefully they don't waste these characters and hopefully they come back in the MCU because I want them to come back. So that's it. That was the Marvel Netflix shows ranked. Hopefully you guys like them. Let me know what you guys would rank these. It was easy. Like the middle half and bottom half were hard because I forgot some of the seasons but relatively easy list to do. It's only 13. And yeah, go watch these. If you haven't seen any of these, I mean, I presume if you guys are watching this video, you've seen all the shows. So go watch them or rewatch them. And yeah, so this has been The Road so far and thank you for watching.